Right, so we've done power supplies before. This is one of the Ban Taiwanese power supplies, but this is a bit different because it's the CTVR4, which is a 3 to 5 amp one, which really means 3. Um, and it, CTVR was Castlegate Television and Radio at Grantham, and they were well known for doing one or two, um, uh, hmm, strange and dodgy transceivers like 49 meg 40 channel and stuff like that. So we won't say anything about that and walkie talkies which were 29 megs AM but sold to the general public but anyway the gentleman who owned that business has long passed away and his son lives about seven miles from me and he said would I have a look at this CTVR power supply which is brand new and boxed but he wants me to overhaul it because he wants to be able to use it if he needs to so one brand new band power supply. Yes, and it's the CTVR4 with a plug that's no longer legal. So um, I will take the screws out of this, waiting for Mr. Chippy. We'll just do a preliminary. So we're going to do the usual modification where we do the switching so that it's it's okay. The plug is wired correctly, but it hasn't got the shrouded pins, so that doesn't pass these days. take the screws out Mr Chippy's bench has these pots which aren't, my bench doesn't especially if they come into shot so it's nice to see a new one one not full of burn marks and we're not going to power it up because it, it, chances are it will blow up anyway so we'll be changing these capacitors the Lion brand 22 microfarad there's a couple of I think they're both hundreds there we need to change this fuse holder yep you see it's a type which leaves the fuse behind so if that's wired to positive that becomes live. Positive, we're talking about uh, we're talking about mains. It's AC so it's live. So we change that for a safe type of fuse holder. And we'll need to pop those off to to get the board out. It does have the earth on it. And the transistor is a BDW21. We can actually read it on this one. It's not all been hot. So, credit where credit's due, at least it's switching the live, the brown wire, but it goes, the, the fuse is in neutral. So the, the mains needs to go in to the fuse holder, from the fuse holder to the switch, and from the switch to the transformer. The neutral can go straight to the transformer primary this one's shrouding putting on. They're a single pole switch but there's nothing I can do about that because I can't get replacements which is this size but uh, there's a lot of products today that uh, are only switched on the live. So we'll await Mr Chippy and take it from there. So here we are with Mr Chippy, you can see he's taking the switch out, he's taking the printed circuit board out and he's desmoldering the big capacitor and putting a new one in so we'll come back to this in a bit but we'll rejoin Mr Chippy, what bit are you on with now? Uh, I've done the capacitor, so I'm just putting the wiring in now good, That's put some shrouding on that transformer primary yep, yep we'll come back in 10 minutes 
Right, well, he's just about done, so let's have a look at some of these capacities you've taken out. This is a new power supply, but we just can't risk things at this age because uh, they'll have lost their, they'll need reforming, uh, won't they? So it's cheaper just to change them. So uh, let's put them on the SR meter. Yeah. Yep. 113.8. Right. Probably have you got your ESR chart? I'll go I'll go and get it. I'll leave that running. And it's at how many volts is that rated at? Twenty five? Uh sixty. It should be 0.7. It's 1.75. Hmm. Oh, it's That's 5.7 ohms. Wow, <laughs> that's not definitely wrong. It's it's a bad one. So we'll do the big capacitor again. 3.6. That's uh, 2200 at 25 volts. Well, I've not got. It should be something around uh, 0.1. Yeah, no, it's too low. Yeah, so there we are. We do have an ESR chart which I downloaded from the internet. Right, so it'll be just a matter of putting the plug on it. Yep, so the. Um the live input goes straight to the fuse now, that's all shrouded and the mains now goes to the switch they're all shrouded from the switch to uh, transformer and of course the neutral just goes straight to the transformer and that's, that's it really. Good, so change the plug and we're going to do a performance test and a pack test. So there we've got a new plug on that, so you've got a cord grip to stop the outer sheath pulling back these are all cut just so, neutral, live, which goes through a 3 amp fuse in this case. These type of plugs have a 13 amp maximum capacity, which is the same as the 3 bar radiator. And the earth, which is the longest wire, so the idea is that if the cord grip did fail, the first one to pull out is the live, then the neutral, and finally the earth would disconnect. So there we are, super safe plugs, um, introduced in the 1950s. Do you want to put the plug top on? And we'll get the pat test. Where's the pat? Where's it gone? Don't know. What did you do with it? <laughs> That's on the floor. Then. Oh. Right. So we're plugged in. We need to switch the unit on. Power supplies on the on position, select test, class. Is it on? No, it's not. Yeah. So, class yeah. one. Ah. Bear in mind you need the earth probe on. Yeah, I'll start that again. Yeah, yeah. see it failed because I failed, failed to work. Uh, <laughs> so, again. So it'll start putting about 10 amps through the various things. Is it 400 volts, 800 volts? 500. 500, is it? Mm. I was thinking about that, yeah. Yeah, right, just tilt it towards the camera slightly, the machine. There we go, that's gone through all those tests. So now we'll go, we'll put it together. No, we won't. We'll get our uh, power supply test unit out. Right, so we've got it plugged into the electronic load. Time to switch on, 13 point something. And that's off load at the moment. So the red LED is on the power supply, which shows us an actual output voltage, not just the fact the mains is on like the Bremis one do. So are we gonna put one amp on it? If you want. And yeah, there we go. 12.9. So 
So most CVs, most UK CVs are going to be drawing about 1.2 amps. So having a power supply that's 3 amp is just right. Some of these new sets are drawing 2.5 amps, so it might be sensible to move up to a 5 amp power supply for some of those. It's because of the CPUs in them draw more current. Let's pop it up to 2 amps. 12.4. And then it's three amps is its maximum, so take it to three. Ah, uh, regulation is dropping off. So let's take it up into in steps. Two point one, two point two, two point three, two point four. Mm -hmm. That's where regulation ends. So two point four amps, and this is exactly what you'd expect. We have had three amps out of them but this 5 amp surge is a bit of uh, BS so that's working fine and it illustrates about it's probably still going on the lies that are on the front of a lot of things you purchase so 2.5 amps runs a UK CB absolutely fine so it's time to put it together so before I put the lid on it's the next day by the way before I put the lid on, this is the 3 to 5 amp model, the one with the two rectifier diodes, and we've come to the conclusion 2.4 amps, and, and that's about what you're going to get, and that's fine. But of course, we all know it's BS about this 3 to 5 rating. That's why when we did our version, we have the four diodes. Now, this is the board, this is a copy of the board which is in the 5 to 7 amp version of these. So when we made our 3 to 5 in inverted commas, we used the 5 to 7 board. And that's why this will do 3 amps all the time. Won't do 5 amps really, but this is our version. So you see the difference. You've got two of the capacitors. You've got four of the diodes instead of two. And ah, I think much, much of much else is the same but that's the difference so we would always recommend if you've got a choice and this is as I say I can't say enough this is absolutely adequate but you've got to take this uh, 3 amp thing with a pinch of salt because we've just proved it isn't and they're all the same and that's even when you've replaced all the uh, the parts that need replacing and the parts we've put in are higher quality than this ever was in the first place um, but we would thoroughly recommend that if you got the choice and you're offered the 3 to 5 amp version or the 5 to 7 even though you only wanted to draw 1 amp out of it choose the 5 to 7 but there we are that's why we did that uh, when we made our power supply that's why we did that so we'll put the lid on it Well, it's cost the customer less, hasn't it? It's got less parts in it. I think he's got a 5 to 7, but he hasn't got one in a box. Somebody once said about transformer hum. Well, the way the higher quality transformer manufacturers do this at the factory is that they are pressure cooked with varnish. Well, we wouldn't <laughs> stick it do, do it to that extreme. But what we do if we find we've got a noisy transformer, and I haven't had that with these, but I could fully understand it could happen. The transformer, as you will be aware, is made up of laminations in its core. And if those aren't bonded in some way, or tight enough, then you get hum. So we would simply put it in a tin of varnish overnight and the next day we would take it out and try it for a week that would be our uh, way of doing that and so far every transformer we've treated in that way hasn't hummed again but that's a kind of less posh way than the, the factory would do it 
So I hope you found that interesting. It's so nice to have the CTVR version. And it's it's so special when this is owned by the son of the man who actually owned the firm CTVR. And he's kept it as that keepsake. He's recently become licensed radio amateur and he comes through on our repeater from time to time. So uh, it's nice to have him on board. So thanks for watching. And we'll let him know that's available for collection. The next video is a very, very unusual CB radio. It's one of mine. Um, it is a Spirit 40F. We have been, I say we here, it's not Royal We, it's Mark, ZX2, uh, G7NDJ and myself, have had this on our list, um, well, since 1981. One went for auction on eBay about four years ago, and I think it was about £95, and my internet went, you know, funny, just on that bidding I might not still have won it there's a limit to what I can put in and it was complete the the Spirit 40F was a transportable um, so it works as a handheld it works as a bit like the Midland 77805 it works as a base station it works as a mobile comes with a mag mount comes with an aerial but we've only been able to buy body only and I've paid 55 quid for it, which is probably 54 pounds too much. But Mark and I have never seen one. And here's the bottom line. This is what's really inside a Murphy base station. See you on the next video.